What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we're gonna unbox and go through some features of Denon's new flagship receiver for 2018, the AVRX 8500H. The unit retails for $4,000 and is the world's first 13.2 channel receiver. Inside we get a three prong power plug, remote plus batteries, Odyssey calibration mic, manuals, Wi-Fi antennas, and Odyssey mic stand. The receiver is pretty hefty, weighing in at 51 pounds. It supports all the newest immersive surround formats, such as Dolby Atmos, DTS-X, and Oral 3D. Oral 3D doesn't work out of the box, but it is expected to come within the next couple of months via a free firmware update. The unit uses four fourth generation Shark DSP processors to handle all audio processing. It also supports high-res audio, and if you're into multi-room audio, it has HEOS compatibility with HEOS-enabled speakers and other HEOS receivers. Amazon Alexa is also built in. Alexa, play rock music. So you can just ask Alexa to play music from streaming sources, switch between inputs, turn the volume up and down, pause, mute, and skip to the next song. Bluetooth and Apple AirPlay are also on board. On the front, the X8500 looks the same as previous iterations. It has an LCD display flanked by an input selection knob to the left and volume control to the right. Underneath the metal drop-down door, you get zone selections up to three zones, quick access to direct source inputs, an HDMI input, and directional buttons to access the receiver's menus in case you don't have the remote handy. Around the back of the unit are two subwoofer outs and 15 pairs of speaker outputs with only 13 max channels ever being active at one time, seven HDMI ins and three HDMI outs. There will be a future HDMI 2.1 hardware upgrade that'll support up to 8K resolution and more. You'll have to send the receiver into the service center to have this done, and you'll likely have to pay an upgrade fee. There's also RCA pre-outs for all channels if you don't want to use the internal amplifiers and choose to use it as a processor only. There's two USB inputs, one up front and one in the rear, which is used to power devices like Roku's and Fire Sticks. You also get some legacy inputs like composite and component ins and outs, along with multi-channel audio 7.1 inputs. There's an RS-232 for home control, as well as a LAN input for a solid network connection. Now let's take a quick look at some of the receiver settings. And if you have a Denon or Moritz receiver, a lot of this will look familiar to you. Let's check out some of the audio settings. We have subwoofer level adjustments for both subs, bass sync, surround parameters, Cinema EQ will roll off some of those highs in the movie soundtracks so they won't seem so bright. This is kind of like THX's re-EQ. Audio sync. Here's volume settings. Graphic EQ with nine band adjustments. Video settings. Looks like we get a vertical stretch mode for anamorphic lens users. So kudos for Denon for throwing that in. That's pretty huge. It also supports Dolby Vision and HLG pass-through if you have a compatible player and display. It's also supposed to be getting an update to support enhanced ARC as well in the near future, so we can get lossless audio through compatible television sets. Now in the video output settings, if you're watching 4K content, you won't get the overlay on top if you need to change some video settings. You'll get the overlay on top of a black screen Unless you're watching 1080p content, here we have the analog output settings, on-screen location for media info. Now make sure you switch this over to enhanced if you want to get HDR working properly. It's set to off by default, so make sure it's set to on. This is the amp assign section. Here if you decide you want to use an external amp to run your rear speakers, you can assign those unused amps in the receiver to power any of the other zones. As you can see here, you have a ton of configurations for speaker placement. Couple of things to note though, you can have 15 speakers connected at once, but the receiver will only process 13 channels at one time. Also, Native Atmos will give you all 13 speakers at once, as well as Dolby Surround upmixing if you're running six height speakers, but it won't upmix to the wide speakers if you're running those. DTS-X is limited to 11 speakers at once, as well as Neuralex upmixing. Oro will support all 13 speakers if you use their setup, for front height and rear height configuration. I believe it'll shut off the top middle row in favor of center height and top surround. The rest of the settings should be self-explanatory with distances and crossover settings, network and general settings. So as you can see here from the speaker placement settings, you have a ton of options. You can switch between RO setups and Atmos setups by disabling speakers, which is pretty flexible. I've had this hooked up in my home theater, and in comparison to my normal setup, 
using an Integra Pre-Pro and Rotel amps, I found the receiver held its own quite well. It drove my speakers to reference levels with no problems. And like many Denon receivers, I found the sound to be a bit neutral compared to my Integra and Rotel amp setup. I also compared it to a Marantz 7702, which to me tended to be a bit warmer and softer sounding. And I did prefer the Denon over the Marantz, and I thought it sounded a little more detailed. Soundstage was very open, but I did prefer having the Rotel amps on hand for driving my speakers to higher levels. It just sounded a bit cleaner and more effortless. Now don't get me wrong though, the X8500 is no slouch. The receiver is rated at 150 watts with two channels driven at once, so it should be enough to drive most speakers. The screed effects and panning throughout my room sounded precise and very distinct. You also have the option to use the Odyssey Editor app once you run the Odyssey setup. It'll give you more granular control to fine tune your system. I think if you have a medium to medium sized room, this receiver is really gonna stand out, especially if you're gonna run multiple rows of seats. Having six height speakers is really gonna blanket you with sound. But if you have a smaller space, I doubt you'll hear much of a difference trying to cram six speakers on your ceiling. I did set up a pair of wide speakers to listen to some Atmos soundtracks, and I gotta say I heard very little if anything going on in them. There was some more happening in the wides if you use the Neural X up mixer, but you do lose your back speakers. So there's just a ton of listening options with this receiver, and I think you'll be bouncing back and forth between modes, especially if you like to tweak your sound. Now if you're itching to get a new receiver and have the space to run this beast, I think it's a no-brainer. There are other options like Trinov or Datasap processors that can do more speakers, but they do cost about five times as much as the Denon, and you'll have to supply your own amplification. Also with the HDMI 2.1 upgrade, this purchase should last you quite a few years. I've only touched on a couple of things the X8500 can do, so if you have any questions, just leave us a comment below. Now if you're interested in grabbing this receiver, I'll leave a link down below. Give us a thumbs up if you found the video useful and check out our social media links. And if you're not a subscriber, hit that subscribe button for more content like this. And we'll see you again in the next video.